Greetings comrades, in this clip we're going to define sampling, we're going to talk about why we sample in research, we're going to look at different sampling techniques and we're going to evaluate each of those techniques. So first of all, what is a sample? Well, a sample is simply a subset of a population of interest. But before we get into sampling, we really need to determine our population of interest. So for example, I'd love to do some research on the impact of courtside abuse on the well-being of basketball referees, young basketball referees at that. So we need to determine our population when we're devising our hypothesis. And that's also gonna come into play when we're generating a conclusion based on the data that we generate. So now that we've defined our population of interest, young basketball referees, we're at this point, we're ready to design an experiment. But we're gonna to need to recruit some participants in order to do some testing and generate some data. Now it's just gonna be impractical to test all the basketball referees in the world, in Melbourne, whatever. It's gonna to be too hard to access them. So therefore we're just going to test a subset of the population of young basketball referees, a sample that is. Now there are different ways that we can recruit participants into our study. One way is via convenience sampling and that's where we're selecting readily available participants to be involved in our study. So for instance, I could contact uh, a local basketball uh, competition and I could request access to a database of young referees. And so therefore I'm accessing readily available participants who might live close in the area. Now the advantage of that is that's gonna be time and cost effective compared to alternative sampling techniques. The problem is we're gonna have issues when we're trying to generalize our results to the wider population of basketball referees in this case. Alternatively, we could try random sampling. So random sampling, what we need is a list of all members of our population of interest so if I narrow my population to young basketball referees that live in Melbourne, I need to get a database of all those names. And if we went old school, I could put all those names in a hat and then pick out 50, let's say, so that every member, um, every one member of that population has an equal chance of being selected. Now the advantage of that is we're going to generate a more representative sample of our population of interest, young basketball refs in Melbourne. The limitation is that's gonna be hard, it's gonna be time consuming and potentially costly in order to get that database in the first place of all basketball referees that are registered in Melbourne. The third option is stratified sampling. So we would use stratified sampling if we were worried about statistical diversity in our population of interest and the potential to have either an overrepresented majority or an un underrepresented minority group. So what we do is we establish strata based on characteristics of interest. This could be gender. So we could have a male strata versus a female strata. It could be based on ethnicity. It could be based on age, on any type of characteristic that we deem important. Once we've determined our strata, which is relatively simple, then we need to do some maths. We need to work out the percentage that each strata occupies in our total population. So if we look at this example that we have on the screen, we've got a population of 12, we've got three stratas, we've got our blues, our browns and our greens. And then we do the maths and we can see that browns are half our strata. So therefore, we're gonna make sure that our sample proportionally represents our population of interest. So half of our sample is gonna be brown. Now, if we go back to our population, a quarter of our population is blue, a quarter is green. So we're gonna make sure that our sample is proportionally representative of that population. And so therefore, if we wanna go old school, we get those three blues, put them in a hat, pick out one, six browns in a hat, pick out two, three greens in a, in a hat, pick out one, and therefore, bang, our sample is proportionally representative of our population of interest. So 
Another example, step one, determine your strata. So again, blacks, greys, browns. Step two, work out your percentages. So therefore we've got 40% of our population is, is the blacks, 30% greys, 30% browns. Step three, work out how big your sample is going to be. And then step four, come up with a method that's going to basically give each member of the strata an equal chance of being selected if we want to use stratified random sampling in a way that makes our sample proportionally representative of your population of interest. So just recapping, convenient sampling, selecting readily available participants, the advantage, more time and cost effective than the other techniques, limitation is it is less likely to generate a representative sample and therefore less we generate less reliable data and it's more difficult to generalize to a wider population because of that lack of representation of our population of interest. Random sampling is, is the go-to if practical, so we're giving every member of the population an equal chance of being selected. The advantage of that is we're going to get more reliable data. The sample is more representative of the population, so we're in a much better position to generalise our results to that wider population. Problem is, it's not always practical. It's going to be very difficult um, often to actually come up with your, to generate the database of your population of interest. So VCE students, don't be scared when you are designing um, some type of research investigation to choose convenient sampling because it just might not be practical to generate a random sample. Stratified sampling is where we use diverse, is where we look at the diversity in our population of interest. We establish strata in a, in a way that makes our sample proportionally representative of each of those strata. The advantage is that all our minority and majority groups are fairly represented. The limitation is the time and cost involved. Hope that helps.